Hey guys, what's up? It's your man Pete. And today we're going to talk about how you can rent out your first condo or house as a first time landlord. And a lot of people don't know this actually, but real estate people, real estate salespeople and brokers can actually help you rent out your property. Finding and referencing tenants can be smooth and easy if you work with the right people and they know what to look for. Or it could also be time consuming and really stressful if it's not done the right way, especially at the beginning. So in this video, I'm just going to give you some of my best pointers and tips on what to look for if you're looking to rent out your property. So we not only just do buying and selling, but we also do help people find and screen good tenants to live at the property you're going to vacate and sometimes even as a property manager with a fee. But in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about why you want to work with an experienced real estate agent. I mean, the tips in here are also useful for you if you're going to try to do it on your own, but primarily it just explains what an agent can do for you and just sort of the thinking process and how we do our work when we're looking for good qualified tenants for your property. And we'll get a little deeper into that in the rest of the video so stay tuned and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side right after this. You know, screening for tenants is a lot like screening candidates for a new job opening. <laughs> God knows I was terrible at interviews in my 20s when I was looking for jobs. But we do look for a few documents in particular to verify the person, you know, how much money they're making, what's their credit history, how much information has been filled out in their rental application. But clearly the most important thing that we really look at is the income, right? So you got to be able to have enough income to support the rental. So, you know, when I'm looking at it, your income just looks like you're struggling, right? And then you've got car payments, you've got loans, you've got other things you've got to pay for. And basically if your rent or your living expenses is 50 or 60% of your income, that's probably going to be too much. You know, 50% might be okay. Depends on if you have a car or not, or if you have any other loans or so forth. So we really, really focus on the employment documents. Um, and what we do here is we actually call the employer to verify the person who produced the employment letter. You know, usually it's someone from HR or a direct manager or supervisor. And so what we cross check is, you know, their employment position, how long have they been working there, just to see if the dates match up, you know, what's the salary that's in the letter. And if I'm in fact speaking to the person who produced this letter so that I can verify that this is actually the person we're talking to. And generally it's a little bit on the riskier side if somebody just started a new job, you know, they're only two weeks or a month into their job because they may not even be able to pass their probationary period. So what if they, you know, suddenly lose that job, then all of a sudden they're not going to be able to pay the rent and then they have to break the lease. So generally if it's apples to apples, if I've got two offers in front of me, generally we will choose the person who's been the most stable and has held the longest tenure at their job so that it's a little bit more predictable and we know how much income is coming in every single month. Okay, so now we'll move on to the rental application. And to me, the rental application is kind of like that first question when you're at a job interview and they always ask you, you know, tell me about yourself. That's what the rental application is. Like it's just, it's a place for you to open up about as much about yourself as possible. Obviously making yourself look as favorable as possible, but the rental application is the place where you have to show your honesty and transparency. So if you're hiding information, you know, and there's, you know, the stuff missing, you're just being very difficult about revealing stuff or trying to hide stuff in the application, that's generally not a good sign for tenants. And so it's important to fill out as much of this application as possible. You could probably leave out the social insurance number. You don't need to do that. But if you'd like to share that, then generally that's a good sign. It's a good sign of confidence, right? And so in this application, you're going to reveal sort of, you know, your current job, your past jobs, you know, places you've lived before, some landlord references, some personal references some professional references. You're going to fill out whether you have a car. You're going to fill out whether you actually have a pet or not. Some people get a little confused and worried about whether they should put in a pet or not. But, you know, for me working for a landlord, you know, it's better for you to be transparent and we can sort of figure out, you know, and negotiate something into the agreement, such as a damage deposit or a higher rent, just to accommodate your little furry or unfurry best friend. So now we'll go quickly on to the credit report, which is obviously very important. I mean, all three of these documents are super, super important, but a credit history History is really important here in Canada and in the US because it shows your credit history. It shows how much you have or hold in loans on your accounts. It shows your previous addresses and does it match up with what's written on your rental application. It shows whether you've defaulted on any loans or not. And you know, it's okay. We can all make mistakes on our credit report or in our credit history, especially when we're a little bit younger and we don't understand what credit is. But generally speaking, as a renter, especially here in Toronto and the GTA, if you've got a score over 700, yeah, it's pretty easy. We can just sort of get you through 
through the credit process as long as you haven't defaulted on any previous loans or anything like that or filed for bankruptcy which is which is a tough one i mean if you're in the 650 to 700 range for a credit score um generally that's acceptable for a renter because you're looking to improve yourself you're looking to get yourself up to 700 right but the key here is we want to look at a consistent payment pattern because there's no other way for us to know whether someone's paid their rent on time you know other than checking landlord references and looking at the credit report there's there's really no other way and so if you've been taking care of your credit you've been doing your very best to you know maintain your payments even if you have to pay a minimum payment on your credit card that maintains your credit history okay and then after all of these documents are done and completed then we get to the references right so we go through the list and we call the people that they put down as their past landlord references essentially we want to find out have they been paying their rent on time how good or how difficult of a tenant they've been this part can be a little bit tricky because sometimes past landlords they want to be nice because they want to get rid of the current tenants so that can be a little bit tricky and a little bit hard to detect generally speaking if they're a good tenant and you've got a good landlord then they'll probably give a pretty good review of the person and then like I mentioned earlier in the video, I will place calls to HR for people's companies or where they work at to verify that they're actually making the money that they say they're making. But yeah, really the key when I'm talking to past landlords is I just want to make sure that they've been paying their rent on time, you know, paying their other obligations on time like utilities. And then of course we want to know how easy or difficult they've been in terms of dealing with other people because to be honest, personality and attitude plays a real big factor in terms of getting your place rented out. So you want to be as smooth and easy to work with and easy to deal with, you know, just be civil, just be nice. And then as a tenant, if you do good during your lease term and you're reasonable, then we can give you a glowing letter of testimonial about the tenant. And we can also give you rental receipts and all types of stuff. So again, whenever you're in any sort of relationship, it's always about give and take. So if you're good to the tenant, then the tenant is going to be good to you. So as a tenant, if you're good to the landlord, then the landlord is going to be good to you. After all of these things are done, then the decision still rests with you, the landlord, where you should decide, are you going to go ahead or, you know, do you feel a little bit shaky? about this person and obviously as a first-time landlord you're not gonna feel totally comfortable or understand what's really happening so that's why you need to rely on somebody like an experienced agent or broker who's been through this you know who's had many many rodeos and so they can sort of guide you in the right direction and what I should point out as a disclaimer is that there is no perfect tenant you know there's no perfect situation there's no perfect person right so we have to accept that there's always going to be some level of risk you know but here at Selling Toronto we really try to minimize that amount of risk by doing the profiling, the screening, the qualification really, really well. And then at the same time, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're stuck in a box either. And this is the only way you do things. You do kind of want to have a bit of an open mind too, depending on the situation, because sometimes the most unorthodox deals can be done. And sometimes those end up being the best tenants too. And, and sometimes we want to give people an opportunity and a chance. But yeah, nothing is 100%. And at the end of the day, when it comes to making a decision, it ends up actually being more of a gut call, like an intuition type decisions, because the reality is all decisions are made that way, even when you're buying or selling your property. So you take in all this information, you take in all this data, and then you sort of make a decision. And that's why we're here to help walk you through and guide you through and show you and give you experience stories about how we operate and how we we deal with these types of situations. So I hope you potential and new landlords out there found this video helpful in some way. But uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in hiring us here at Selling Toronto to look after your properties, then please feel free to do so. We're happy to help out. And hopefully this video gave you a little bit of information and insights into how we do things, what our process is, and how we help you maintain one of the most expensive assets you have in your portfolio. So please be sure to hit the subscribe button, give us a like, throw us up a comment. But uh, yeah, feel free to stick around and watch more videos here on our channel. We'll see you guys in the next one and bye for now. But the main thing is really the experience factor, right? So it's nice to have somebody who knows and understands how to rent out properties, how to manage tenants, and how to screen them. Like every little step of the way is pretty important because at the end of the day, as a landlord, you want it to be as hassle-free as possible, right? You just want someone who's gonna pay their rent on time, pay their other bills on time, someone who's just looking for a place for themselves to live or their family, so who's gonna sort of take care of the property and not damage it too much while they're living there. And the experience factor really comes into play when it comes to solving problems because there's always new and different situations happening all the time as evidenced by the unpredictable COVID situation. So it's important to have people that know how to handle situations, you know, not 
escalate situations, solve them so everyone can be happy, go on and live their lives. Okay, so before we move further, why don't we get into a little bit about why people are renting out the place that they're living in? You know, a few of the major reasons, especially with the clients who are coming to us lately, you know, are a lot of people are very savvy about property these days. I mean, it's fairly obvious because property values just keep going up every single year, whether it's condos, townhouses, or single detached properties. And so people want to hold on to as many properties as they can. And so they're happy to rent out the property that they're not living in anymore. Oftentimes it's because they've run out of space, they need a bigger property, but at the same time, they want to keep both properties and they can afford to carry both as long as they've got a good tenant paying the rent. So then this is sort of a great way for them to learn how to become an investor, landlord. And that's why a lot of people contact us here at Selling Toronto so that not only do we help them execute on what needs to be done, but we educate them and let them know so that they can share that knowledge or pass that knowledge on to their kids one day. And then sometimes you have some who actually move back into their parents' family home because they're having another kid or they're having more kids and they just need the help. They just need extra hands and eyes to help out with the kids, especially when parents need to go back to work, you know, following their Matt and Pat leaves. So in all these different scenarios and situations, you'll need to rent out the property to a, you know, good qualified tenant who's got a decent job or, or earning a decent amount of income and we have over the years collected a number of these clients who need to rent out their properties not just locally but internationally as well too so some of them they own property but they don't live in the country they don't live in the city and they need someone to look after the properties so informally we've been looking after properties for our clients for many many years now but we are considering possibly setting up a property management arm for selling Toronto real estate so if you guys are interested in renting out your properties feel free to give us a shout but for now let's get into how you can choose a good tenant for your condo or house.